To my knowledge, I don't know if I've ever done a Movie Feuds episode so highly in demand, so sought after. So grab your rosary and pray we make it through this episode unscathed. It's Sister Act versus Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit on Movie Feuds. Please rise for the song. Listen, I know this video is going to put up dismal numbers, but I'm past the point of caring, folks. I just want to do videos that I'm proud of, and I just rewatched these two classics with my family, so I thought, they're fresh in my mind, let's do a feud about them. Speaking of the views, or I should say the view, host Whoopi Goldberg is the main attraction here in Sister Act. To say Whoopi was a big deal in the 90s would be a tremendous understatement. And in Sister Act, the EGOT winner gets to showcase why audiences and movie studios alike loved having her in roles. She plays Dolores, the lounge singing turned fake nun Sister Mary Clarence. In the first film, she's joined by a variety of fellow penguins with Mary Patrick and Mary Robert being the big fan favorites. I'm not gonna lie to you. Not only did Wendy Mackenna have an incredible voice, she was also a smoke show in the eyes of young Adam. As an adult Adam, she's heavenly. Harry Potter fans get to see Mrs. McGonagall as Mother Superior here. The no-nonsense head mistress who constantly comes to blows with Whoopi's character. The villain of the picture is Vince LaRocca, played by Harvey Keitel. He's a mobster out in Vegas, always a looming threat in the background. In the sequel, we get to see all our favorites back, but the focus now is on a bunch of troubled teens. Which is a shame because I really enjoyed the nun hijinks in the first. That's not to say the sequel doesn't have anything going for it. There are definitely a few breakout stars. The most notable ones would be Jennifer Love Hewitt and Lauren Hill, pre-Fugees. It's a band. For the most part, I can't stand most of the teens outside of my boy Amel, played by Ryan Toby. Although Hill can obviously sing, I just enjoy Toby's songs and personality far more. We get a small set of monks this time around too, with Michael Jetter being the easy standout due to some great physical comedy. I'm thinking about that red-headed nun again. Let's head to confession. I love it, I love it. I don't think Mother Superior considers Dolores the poster child for the Catholic community. To say she's rough around the edges would be an understatement. Dolores got in bed with the wrong guy, and soon she's going to be sleeping with the fishes. The Vegas headliner is on the run after witnessing her boyfriend kill a man in cold blood. The cops put her on the witness protection program and place her in the last place Vince would think to look. A convent. Dolores, now referred to as Sister Mary Clarence, will need to learn how to blend in to St. Catherine's. Or, she's going to be rubbed out. Who's writing on this show? After a rough start, it's clear that Dolores would be best suited to head up the music department at church, where she quickly whips the choir into shape while adding a little bit of that Vegas flair to it. These penguins may not be able to fly, but they sure can sing, which is fortunate, as it's revealed the church turnout is so low, they may have to close down. Word spreads around the community quickly, and before you know it, the pews are full. St. Catherine's is safe. The same, unfortunately, can't be said for Dolores, as the publicity from the choir has put her right back in LaRocca's crosshairs. With Mary C. kidnapped and brought back home, it's up to the nuns to save the day. On the surface, the second movie may seem quite a bit different than the first, but the playbook still is the same. Instead of a church on the brink of closing, it's a school. Instead of Maggie Smith butting heads with Whoopi, it's Bernard Hughes as Father Maurice. It's a good thing old habits die hard, and Mary just can't stay away from the school when the nuns beg her to come back and turn things around. What am I doing with my arm here? It's just so unnatural. The good news is these kids can sing. And wouldn't you know it, there's a competition out there that can not only give them a nice little bit of change, but it could also keep the doors open. There's a bad amount of time dedicated to Lauren Hill's character, Rita Watson, and her Footloose-esque storyline. Her mother hates singing because it doesn't put food on the table, Rita! So she forbids her daughter from being part of the choir. This makes Rita a bit of a Sour Patch Kid to be around. She's kind of a rotten apple. I don't really like her character. She's, she's pouty, she's, she's just snotty, she's mean. No. Our hard pass on Rita. By the end of the picture, everything you think will happen does, and the credits are up before you know it. And the credits were sticking around for as they happen to be the best part of the film, as we get to see the students and the nuns interacting, singing together for the one and only time. I do appreciate that the second film at least tried to branch out a bit from the first, but the formula seems a bit stale, and there's just not much life to any of it. So, it's like real religion. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. 
The first and second films may look, sound, and feel familiar, but they had different writers and directors. I blow your mind? Probably not. I mean, it's, we're talking about Sister Act here. Dirty Dancing director Emile Ardolino does a great job directing the music numbers and slower, more intimate moments. But I think he lingers far too long on some of the unnecessary sections. The beginning, for instance, is a complete slog to get through. Toward the end of the film, we see far too many nuns for a small helicopter run into a casino. This little Scooby-Doo chase stretches far too long as well. Music-wise, I think the first has the edge here, but I could easily see a case for the sequel. They both have good numbers. I Will Follow Him, Rescue Me, Shout, and some other classics really keep you engaged. I just think the nuns are far more fun to watch. The unconventional group of ladies have impressive range, and every time Sister Mary Roberts busts out, I fall in love all over again. Mary Patrick is used the perfect amount too. By the sequel, she's already a bit of a caricature of herself. Rookie director Bill Duke takes over on the sequel, and after perusing through his IMDb page, this was pretty much a one and done situation for him. He, he just did a lot of TV movies after that, so. I mean, to be fair, once you've done Sister Act, Two, back in the habit, all, all you can do is go down from there. You know, that, that's like the top echelon of, of films, so. <laughs> I didn't notice anything heinous in the production that's worth pointing out, besides some of the slang terms and dreadful outfits. Frankie at one point dresses up like a reject from a Super Mario Brothers game, and there isn't near enough Jennifer Love Hewitt in this thing. I need more of her in this, and in general. The nuns only get one song in the film, which is brutal. What's even worse is the song chosen is just bizarre. They sing Ball of Confusion to a bunch of elderly folks. And while the ladies still sell me on the performance, I think a better number could have been selected. Oh Happy Day is easily my favorite song of the bunch, with Joyful Joyful and Ain't No Mountain High Enough working well too. I think I've said enough. Let us pray for a winner. I gathered my flock here on Adam Does Movies in the community tab to vote for the winner of these two films. The chosen one was obvious with 83% of the votes going to Sister Act. 17% of these heathens voted for the sequel. The Sister Act movies are harmless easy watches. They don't get preachy with the messages and they have a good uplifting spirit about them. Family flicks seem harder to come by these days, so if you're a sucker for these types of films, give them a watch. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. Pitch Perfect Trilogy next? I'm, I'm, I'm in a weird place right now.